In this video, we're going to look at using the advanced filters in Microsoft Clarity. So in a previous video and blog post, I talked about using the filters where we can look at the filtering from the dashboard perspective, which uses the same set of filters on the recordings. And then also we have the heat maps as well. Now for the heat maps, what you see here is that's it. It's just one set of filters. But if we go back to the dashboard and this is the same on the recordings, we'll see the filters, but we've also got this advanced section for filters as well. Now, if we have a look at the advanced filters, a lot of these are going to be the same as the ones that are on the standard filters, but they're allowing you to do a little bit more in terms of interacting with this. So for example, if we look at the user info filters, we've got browser. When we use the browser filter in the regular filters area, we're just basically um, able to say we want to find uh, recording information where it has got this specific browser. What we're able to do here is we're able to say excludes Edge or includes Edge. So we're able to actually set it up to say, I want to see things that have got this or that have not got this. Um, what we've also got is the same thing for operating system and also for device as well. So I can say, I want to see information that includes the operating system of Android, but also excludes tablet. So in other words, I want to only see it if it's on a um, mobile device. So I can set that up. And as I do, when I um, click and select these things and add them, it starts to build up what that filter is going to look like. Until we click apply, it's not actually going to do anything. Well, I've got nothing that matches that, so that's fine. So let's go ahead and clear that and go back to the advanced filters. So that's the user info. Next, what we've got is the path filters. So with the standard path filter, what we're doing is we're including data that's added to any of these four filters. So the visited URL, entry URL, exit URL, and referring site. In the advanced filters for the paths, we can do more. So for each of these different path filters, they're all the same for each one. We have the ability to put in a visited URL. So I'm going to say it must include forms in it. I can say it's not just is, but is not. So I can basically say is not this. So then I could also then go down and say exit URL is this. So I can use that includes or excludes. So I can use these different um, variables here to determine what sort of path I'm looking for. Next, we've got the session filters. So for the session filters, that's going to be covering a period of time that a user spent on the site from the entrance to the exit. So what we've got is the session duration, the session click and the session page count. So for the duration, I'm basically saying that the duration is either equal to greater than or less than. So I want to maybe find those that are greater than five minutes, 30 seconds. And then I can go ahead and apply that filter. I can also do session click count. So within that session, how many clicks actually occurred? I want session click count that's greater than 10. And maybe a session page count that is less than 15, whatever it might be. So I can go ahead and keep on adding those filters or those variables to that filter criteria. Next, I have the page filters. So for this, I've got the page duration and the page click count. So for this, similar to the session duration, I'm putting that in in minutes and seconds and equal to greater than or less than. And the same thing with the click count, how many clicks on a specific page. So I want to see information recordings where within that session, the pages themselves, I only want to see those that have pages that have um, 10 or more clicks or whatever it might be that I want to put in. Now, what I've also got is the ability to either show, so yes, or hide, which would be no, those um, pages where a JavaScript error was detected. So maybe I want to see all pages that have got that. So I'm going to set that and say yes, um, page, uh, sorry, image errors. So that's where at least one image failed to load. I can look for those as well. So I can do additional searching. Next, what I can do is I can set some advanced filtering for page information. 
where the page size and or the screen resolution meets or matches a specific width and height. So I can set that in, put in those parameters. That might help me where I set sizes based on um, uh, a specific device. So each device has a specific size to it. So I could maybe say, well, I only want to see those where it's a iPhone or a Samsung or whatever it might be, then I can set the sizes for this to filter. And then I've got visible and hidden page. So visible page is what we have right now. We are looking at this page. It's visible. The user is um, has this front and center up front on their um, laptop or their device. Basically, that's the screen that they're looking at. Hidden would be if I still have this session meaning I haven't closed the browser, but maybe I've pulled up a different browser or a new tab, therefore it's hidden, I'm not looking at it. So I can basically say, I want to see recordings or information where the visible page was visible for greater than, less than or equal to, and whatever time I set, and the same thing with hidden as well. Then we've got those lovely insights of rage clicks, dead clicks, excessive scrolling and quick backs. And for this, I can basically say I want to see those that yes, include rage clicks or no, same with dead clicks and so on. So I'm basically saying either include this by setting it to yes or exclude by setting it to no. And then finally, we have the user interactions. So for this, what we're able to look at is we can see cursor movements. We can see if somebody's done anything with text or resized. So um, cursor movements is basically, has the user moved their mouse around? Um, yes or no. Did they enter text or did they select text? Yes or no. Did they resize the page? And then also we can say, I want to see thing, um, uh, sorry, I want to see information where on the page they scrolled greater than 50%, equal to or less than, whatever that percentage might be. So we can see we're able to really build up a comprehensive filter and search statement and then go ahead and look at the data that matches all of the criteria that we set up. So hopefully you find this useful. The advanced filtering, again, like I said, is only available for the dashboard and the recordings. Uh, but it's definitely a way to really drill down a lot further, even though the regular filters are quite comprehensive, the advanced will just let you drill down that bit further and get that more sort of detailed in what you're looking for. Hope you found this useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.